Hello, my name's Peter Blexley. I'm an author and a broadcaster, but for over 20 years before that, I was a cop. We have about 100,000 police officers in the UK, and that quite simply isn't enough to shut down the drugs industry. In fact, we could have a million police officers, and I'm sure that still wouldn't solve the problem because the supply and demand rules govern the industry. And as, and as long as the demand is there, there will be people that will satisfy that demand. So I'll tell you what I think we should do. We should completely revolutionize our attitude towards the drugs industry. And what I mean is we should legalize and regulate every single drug. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, we would need to have intergovernmental agreements. So say, for example, we would go to Colombia. I say we, the government or a pharmaceutical company that made a bid for, tendered for a contract to supply cocaine. That pharmaceutical company would go to Colombia and enter into a lawful arrangement with coca leaf growers to supply dried coca leaves, not cocaine. Those dried coca leaves are essentially worthless and be, could be transported across the oceans without the risk of piracy into the UK where they would then be sent to a highly regulated, purpose-built and lawful factory where the cocaine would be processed with a lot less of the pollutants and the toxicity that happens when that cocaine is manufactured in the middle of a jungle in Colombia, for example. And then that cocaine, where the purity is guaranteed, the process is known, the contents that have gone into that process are all clearly labelled and regulated. That cocaine would then go on sale on what I will unimaginatively call a drugstore. And there would be a drugstore on each and every high street where you could go in and buy your high quality, 95% pure cocaine. And all drugs would be available there. And it would be a bit like a chemist's because you'd get advice, you'd get warnings, but you would know what was in there. We wouldn't have any dangerous ecstasy tablets with life-ending toxins in there. These drugs would have been manufactured in a sterile, clean, licensed, regulated factory. Not some backstreet, filthy, grubby, horrible garage, for example. Okay, so let's not be naive about this. Organised crime are not going to give up their biggest source of income without a fight. But in order to defeat them, we will have, I say we, you know, the government, the pharmaceutical companies, a lot of us, will have to beat the criminals on price, purity and availability. Because who's going to buy lower grade drugs off of some bloke who might have a knife down the back of his jeans in a dimly lit pub car park? It doesn't make sense when you can go down the high street and buy pure drugs that you know how they've been manufactured from a licensed sterile retail outlet. We have to defeat organised crime because quite frankly, the damage that the industry is causing is enormous. Look at drug deaths in the UK, rising. Look at drug consumption in the UK, rising. And what do they do with their billions of pounds that they make in profits? Do they give it to charity? I'm not being flippant, but of course they don't. They plow it into other criminal enterprises, potentially child sex abuse people smuggling, terrorism. It's why we have to wrestle the industry from them. And we can do it if people listen to the arguments. Listen to people out there who are far brighter and better informed than me. Some politicians, 
they're getting it. They realise there is a need for reform. I sincerely hope it will happen in my lifetime. But I can tell you one thing. It will happen. Drug law reform is on its way. For over 10 years of my 21 year police career, I worked undercover and I bought literally millions upon millions of pounds worth of drugs of all different descriptions. And I also took countless guns off the street because I bought those off the criminals that were offering them for sale. However, I look back on my police career now and do I take pride in what I did? Frankly and sadly, no. Because are there less drugs and guns on the streets now as a result of what me and my colleagues did? No, of course they're not. So how do I look back on my career? Quite frankly, as a complete and utter fucking waste of time. We were fighting a war that could simply never be won. We thought we were on the side of the angels, we thought we were doing good, and we thought we were gonna win. But the history books have shown us we were doomed to fail. I could go on for a long, long time, but I hope you're beginning to get my drift. I'll be back to discuss more on another occasion. And thank you for watching.